right, so I have plus and minus two, not square root of a negative four. Gordon? Can't take the square root of a negative number and get a positive number. Okay, but there's a reason why you can't do that. Because you can't multiply any negative number, any number by itself to get a negative number. Okay. Well, is that true anymore? Is there, are there no numbers you can multiply by themselves to get negative numbers? Imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers, yeah, imaginary, I. Uh, no real numbers, right? Uh, plus and minus two are both real numbers, so that's one thing. You can't multiply them by themselves to get a negative number. Positive two times positive two. Two times two equals positive four, and negative two times negative two also equals positive four. So neither one of those are square roots of negative four. Okay, and a number can be squared to get a negative number. Well, when, what part of what group of numbers? They're imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers can be multiplied by themselves to give negative real numbers. So, that is to say, I uh, squared negative one. And we can use I along with other square roots Myself to get a negative number. If that be the case, this being incorrect, if we take the square root of both sides, then c should be plus or minus what? Square root of four. Times square root of four times the square root of negative one. Right? And what's the square root of negative one? Square root of four. Well, I guess we forgot that term. Two i. Cases combine these complex numbers incorrectly. C should start by distributing five i. C should multiply those two parentheses together. C gets down to the bottom here. Why is k not completely finished? Last step. So write that down in your notes. You got the back side to the ones that I passed out. completely done, meaning she could do something else. What else can she do? Let's distribute the five, the five i to the other parentheses. Okay, so going all the way back to the beginning, you're saying distribute the five i to here. Now that is a, it's not correct, but it's a very common thing to do. If you're like, we gotta distribute it to everything. Anybody explain why we don't do that? Why we don't distribute that five i to both parentheses? Well, then we factor it out of both parentheses. Or we just no. Yeah, maybe we don't multiply everything together. Five i does have to be distributed, but I have to both. Okay, here. Okay. Uh, well, we're multiplying this times this times this, right? Three things, multiply three things together. Okay. It should work the same as if we multiply just three numbers together. So let's take an example of two times five times seven. I'm just picking numbers out of the, out of the air. I'm multiplying them together. Now if we were to distribute the five i to both these parentheses, what we're really doing is multiplying five i by this number and multiplying 5i by that number. It would be the same as if we took 2 times 5 and
again, two times seven? Well, we don't do that, right? What, how do we multiply these three numbers together? It's really in there, like a couple steps. Seven and then multiply the result by two, or multiply two by seven and then multiply, multiply the result by five. But we multiply two numbers together, to get that result, and then multiply that result by the third number and the fourth and the fifth, and however many numbers we're multiplying together. Okay. So I actually considered making that the mistake that I put in here, but I decided on this other one because it concentrates on, on the imaginary numbers part. That's a distribution mistake. And it's just the, the same mistake as if someone were to take 2 times 5 and then 2 times 7 and do maybe like 10 times 14. Okay? You wouldn't do 10 times 14 like that, would you? For the same reason, you wouldn't multiply this 5 by times both parentheses. Okay. Very common, common mistake. So you should distribute the 5i correctly. Um, pretty sure she distributed these two parentheses together correctly. And so this is correct, it's just not finished. What more can she do? Yep. She can i squared. all done with these, there shouldn't be anything other than a real number. Or i. Or i, yeah. Something maybe multiplied by an i. Maybe a positive thing, maybe a negative thing times i. But i squared, i to the third, i to the fourth, i to the fifth, i to the third, anything can be ultimately simplified down to either negative one, negative i, uh, positive one, or it could be simplified down to i again. Okay. So what is i squared? negative one, so you just say that is just negative one. Right. So it's really minus 125, not... Right, so that'd just be the real number, negative 125 now. What's i to the third? If you look at your notes from yesterday, you should know what i to the third is. Negative i. Negative i is negative i, right? Because it's i squared times i. If we split up that i to the third into i to the squared times i, <coughs> negative one times i, which is negative i. So we have negative 125, as Gordon said, and we have 120i, and what's this going to be all together? Negative 30i. Negative 30i. So we have 120i minus 30i, 90i. Should be able to simplify it all the way down to a real number plus an imaginary number, just i to the third. So you should be able to get down to a complex number. Exactly. All complex numbers can be written as A plus B I. A real number part plus an imaginary number part that might be a real number times the imaginary I. So even if you just have I, that's still a complex number because it's 0 plus 1 I. Yep. So if you're thinking about it, all numbers are could be in the complex numbers. Why should that Well, by the same reasoning, we could write uh, any real number as plus zero times i with its imaginary part. But there's no i there because it's times zero. Same what you said. Go the other way. Uh, then i to the fourth is one, and then it starts over again. i to the fifth is i. value, wait, has not found the correct value for C. And uh, it's hard to see, but we've got one more. So it's just this, this final thing, this final multiplication isn't correct. Why? I think you can probably go ahead and do that one. Anybody else?
ask God why his final multiplication is incorrect? look at what, what he's done. He's taking, I'm saying this final multiplication right here is incorrect. It's just this times this is not that. Oh. What should it be? Over four. It should be over four. So it's just simply, it's just a common mistake of when your two fractions have the same denominator, a lot of uh, brains say, hey, common denominator. So it's over that denominator. So you multiply straight across. And then you multiply straight across. So it should be 169 over Remember that completing the square, our motivation for completing the square is ultimately that we get something in the parentheses is squared, and then we use it in the equation, you know, it equals whatever, right? And the whole idea is we get to take the square root out of both sides. That's the whole motivation for completing the square. So what does it mean to square something? So whatever that thing is, we have two identical parentheses, two identical factors have to be multiplied together so that they can be squared. Right? And the completing the square method just kind of, it ignores what C might start off as. We choose what the best value of C is so that we get two identical values, or two identical factors. So. Before you even know what c is, how do you know it must factor as x minus 13 halves times x minus 13 halves? Right. We know that um, there are two identical factors have to multiply together to give us the original quadratic, whatever it was. And the way we're going to do that is, well, we're going to do x times x is x squared, right? Um, and to get this middle term, we have to get this middle term, we have to get negative 13x. Uh, to get negative 13x with two identical numbers, we're just, to, to add them together and get negative 13, we're defining half of that number. Negative 13 halves times x, negative 13 halves times x, so we have negative 13 halves x minus 13 halves x. 13 halves together with 13 halves, we have 26 halves of 13. So what you think this is just half of 13? Half of 13, you put together two halves of 13, you get 13. So that's how we know. We know it has to factor as x minus 13 times x minus 13, or x minus 13 over 2 uh, times x minus 13 over 2, because they have to add together to get 13x, negative 13x. So that means that we know this guy has to be the result of what? If the x squared from x times x, that's x squared. We get the negative 13 from negative 13 halves times x and the other negative 13 halves, which is this x. And then we get the constant by multiplying these two together. It's a little trickier when we don't have an even number, right? For, for, for b value, the value multiplied by x. Um, but we take it slowly and we remember it's just that number over 2 is half of that number, and then we square it multiplying fractions just straight across, and it's not that hard. Okay. <coughs> Boyer has solved this quadratic equation. Question? Yeah. 
Okay. What TV show in the 1990s? Not all of them, but it's fun. Uh, what's long? What's long? Do you have a television? Do you have happiness in your life? Actually, that series has been pretty disappointing. Uh, it was a great show. It's on Netflix. solve this equation incorrectly. So what has Sawyer forgotten in the step marked with an arrow? This one right here. Write that down. Hand me. Don't give it away. Uh, they're sitting. So this handouts are sitting at your left. Brett at your left. One is the new number. So I wrote this 81 in brown so you can see the stuff in pink is exactly the same as the first step, as the, as the, the initial question that was posed. x squared minus 18x plus 86, that's what the original was, equals 0. Okay. But he adds 81, and even if you knew nothing about completing the square, you would know that you need to do the same thing to both sides. So he's added 81, so he needs to add 81 to the other side. Most basic intro to algebra students know that. They, they know to do the same thing to both sides. But why? Why would he add 81 to both sides? Why is he writing plus 81 here? to work out so that we get two identical factors. So as we discussed before, this would have to be half of 18 and this would have to be half of 18 because we're going to add them together to get this middle term. Negative 18x. Well, if we were to multiply this back out, these two factors we know we have to have, negative 9 times negative 9 would give us the 81. Wait, couldn't you just subtract 85 from both sides? Um, right, so that's my other question. Instead of just moving 86 to the right, as Sawyer did, uh, to uh, to make space for 81, how else could Sawyer have handled the 86? And there is one option. Could have uh, subtracted 5 from both sides. Is this 86 minus 5 would be 81, just like you want? That's what you want. And if you subtract 5 from both sides, then that's just fine. Well, it's another option. sliding it over because we subtract 86 from both sides. So I have maybe negative 86 on the right and then just have like a blank spot on the left. Um, you could instead of, uh, of, of moving it over and, and bringing in 81, you could say x squared minus 18x plus 81 like we need plus 5 more. 81 plus 5 is 86. And that's still b from 0. Whatever you do, it's all going to come out to be the same. We have all these different options. The only thing we care about is that at 
some part of it is this perfect square trinomial of a factor into two identical factors that we can write as squared and then use the square root. Saeed does is divide by 2. Why is that? Why don't you, in your own words, write why you would do that? Why would you divide both sides by 2? What would they do? Yeah. Well, identical factors, we're not, if we had two, right, we tried to factor over the two there, then it becomes one, it becomes one of the It's possible to plain and simple. Yeah, definitely possible, definitely possible, but more difficult, right? If we were to just leave it with that two, if we were to factor two identical factors like this, and we wanted to take this k term times this k term and get two k squared, what number can you multiply by itself to get two like we need? Uh, not a number that that you might normally think of. But I mean, think about it. So we get the number two. Is there a number that can multiply by itself to make two? One point one four one two. It's not a very nice one. So what do we call it? Square root. Of square root of two. Right. Now this problem just became. square root of 2 times this. And then like you have to consider that square root of 2 when you put constants here, and, and those constants are going to have to get multiplied by the square root of 2, and then they've got to add up to 16. So it's, it's possible yeah. we could get the right answer if we would just work that. Yeah, we would not likely do that. Because like then these constants would have to involve the square root of 2 as well, probably. And somehow it's got to be like 4 root 2. That doesn't feel I don't like that. So no thank you. We don't want that 2 in front of our k squared. And if we just divide everything, both sides, by that number, whatever that coefficient of k squared is, or x squared, or whatever, uh, that just turns it into a problem. Well, that's not all normal problems. It's all about completing the square problem. OK? Um, showed me how to do completing the square, but it was always 1k squared. It was never 2k squared or 2k squared or whatever. So to, to fix that, we could divide by 2 or divide by whatever we see in front of k squared. All right, so, so on Saeed's first line, right there, the one that he actually wrote, uh, the right side of the equation is negative 6. On the next step, it's 10. Why? He added 16 to both sides in order to 
complete it so he can multiply k plus 4 times k plus 4. There you go. Make sure. You can see the factors that he wants to have. Uh, if you were to multiply out those factors, you would get k squared plus 8k, but you'd also get a 16. So this, this side now, this left side has also a plus 16, which this side should also have, and so it's negative 6 plus 16 is 10. Then uh, just writes it as the square of the same binomial, takes the square root of both sides, plus or minus the square root of 10, subtracts 4 from both sides. And we use dot. And we use dot. So now he is happy. So he's happy and fulfilled. Uh, any questions from the quiz or from the homework? If you have no questions from the homework, then you can answer. Is this an expert? Well, I want to complete the square thing. Okay. When I show you stuff today, you're going to be like, yeah, I get it. I know exactly what's going on. Keep in mind that after today, we are one quarter of the way through this yeah, class. Yeah. means we should have one quarter of the knowledge that we need to have. Oh, sorry right guys, I'm not confused here. Do any questions? Passing your homework? Can get started on the next thing? Negative 40 divided by 2 is uh -huh. negative 20, negative 20 times negative 20 is 400. So in order to factor that, we're going to need a plus 400 here. 400. Divide by 4, let's see, x squared minus 10x plus 100 equals Back here, was this a perfect square? Yeah. No. Yeah. See, how would a factor if it was a perfect square? Mm -hmm. If it was a perfect square, we're going to have two identical factors. X minus oh, wait, no, no, because there's no four there. Well, we need to get a four in there. So we'll have them as factors. Parentheses. X minus 20 times X minus 20? Yeah. Times 4? Is that what you're saying? Because no. this, these would give me negative 40X and this would give me 400. And 4 times X squared would give me 4, but then I'd have to multiply that negative 40 and that 400 by 4. You want to make it easier on yourself? Yes. Mm. Just divide by four on both sides. Okay. So, just make a little note. This was harder than I thought. Okay. 
make it as easy as possible, I would suggest that you divide four uh, first. So now we get x squared minus 10x minus 3 equals 0. <coughs> it's a little easier. If that guy in front is a 1, that makes our life easier. We're all good? Get a 1 in front of the x squared first. Good idea. Other things not bad ideas, it's just that what you're not thinking of is you need this 4x squared. And I can't just put 4 out here. I'd have to have it be this number times that number. So it'd have to be like 2x times a 2x. If these constants are going to get multiplied by those, it just gets messy. Not impossible, messy. Yeah. All right. Um, in order to have this be a perfect square trinomial, what number do we need here? 25. 25. What we have? Negative 3. 28. 28. Add 28. That's good. If you add 28 to negative 3, you'll get 25. We just need to keep the equation balanced. x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 28. And this factor is as x minus 5 squared plus 8. Take the square root of both sides. x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root. I'm going to write two square roots here because Two answers of 5 plus 2 times the square root of 7 and 5 minus 2 times the square root of 7. <coughs> Are there any questions about that? Because I'm about to have you do it again. Or a different problem. Round 2. Okay, ready to give it another, another try? much easier to solve the quadratic with completing the square where that first term is 1r squared, not 6r uh, squared. So we get r squared plus r plus 2 equals 0. Now what? The next? 2 needs to be 1. stage we should know exactly how this should factor. This might be a great number, like the perfect number, so it's a perfect square trinomial. It might not be. Let's kind of ignore it for a second. We should know how this should factor, and then how it should factor will tell us what the constant should be. How does this have to factor? So identical, so identical factors. will be 1. 0.5. Okay. I like fractions, so we'll go 1 half. So this constant.
constant would have to be quarter. One half times one half. R squared plus R plus one fourth uh, plus two plus equals one fourth. We gotta add one fourth to both sides. <coughs> Subtract two from both sides. Minus two, minus two, minus eight fourths. To your common denominator, minus eight fourths. Negative seven fourths. side, be plus or minus the square root of negative 7 over the square root of 4. Now we can simplify fractions that way, the square root of fractions. So plus or minus, now what's the square root of negative 7? What's that? 7i. Just 7i? Square root of 7? So we'll just put i on the left so it doesn't look like it's in the square root of 7. I times the square root of 7. Remember, we already had the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so really what we have is r plus 1 half equals plus or minus i root 7 over 2. How are we going to get r by itself? Subtract a half. have common denominators, so we could really say negative 1 plus or minus the square root of i times the square root of 7 all over 2. Intriguing. So much possible cash to this answer. Philosophy machine. Indeed. Scale one to five in your hand. Confidence level. If I gave you another one of these, which confidence level would you get? Be that five is more confident. One is not very confident. I would try one more. favorable to do first? Divide by 3. You like dividing by 3. You like to have 1 in front of the s squared. s squared plus 2x plus 3 equals 0. All right. Now what? What's the next thing we're trying to figure out? by now that we need the correct constant right here. And maybe three is it, maybe it's not. How do we figure out if it is or if it isn't? Half of two. Half of two because it's going to factor as s plus half of two times s plus half of two. So it's going to factor as plus one. And so what does that mean that this number would need to be? One. One. So one times one is one. So we could subtract 3 from both sides and then add 1 to both sides. We could subtract 2 from both sides. We could scoot over 3 and add 1 to both sides and then subtract 3. We could do whatever we want. As long
long as we run the one right there and the equation stays balanced. Two times one squared equals equal to square root both sides. S plus one equals remember plus or minus. What's the square root of negative two? square root of a negative number, you can always just write i. So what is i? Square root of negative 1. So i times the square root of a positive number, and then take the square root of that number, or simplify that square root if possible. We want s to be by itself, and so the last thing we do is like this when we're mathematicians, is we notice that we, we're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Right? First thing is get a one in front of the s squared. Get a one in front of the s squared. Next thing is find a way to get a perfect square. Next thing is take the square root. Next thing is subtract the subtract the yeah whatever that thing. It's the same <coughs> thing every time. So when we notice these patterns, uh, we want to like create a program sort of that will just take all the numbers that we start out with, put them through that same process, and spit out the answer. Right? Does it seem like you could do that? Since the same thing happens every time. Okay. So what we would like to have is say we look at this as a times, let's say, x squared, or b times x plus c, right? Every quadratic can be written that way in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, you notice the first step that we always do, for instance, is to divide the whole thing, the whole, both sides, by a. That's the first thing we do. Right? The next thing we do is going to be well, the same every time, the same every time, the same every time. We can make every one of these fit this mold. Now, it is now a Montana State standard that you should be able to do what we're about to do together, and that is to come up with the quadratic formula. Okay, that should be right. Okay. I'm fairly certain you've seen the quadratic formula you can maybe use a little bit. Uh, if not, that's okay, because it's, you could treat it like we've never seen it. Before. I'm just going to build it by following the same pattern we've done for the last three problems. Okay? Four problems if you count the ones from the quiz. <coughs> right. So we'll start out with any quadratic that we want to solve. Okay? And let's make it equal to zero. Even if it wasn't equal to zero to start with, we could make it equal to zero by whatever number's over here, subtract from both sides, and now that's whatever C is. Okay? Does that make sense? So we'll start with it equal to zero. Let's, it's got to start off that way. If it equals five, subtract five from both sides. Right side zero is out. So now whatever that is, minus five is what's the right side. And you can make them all look like that equal to zero. So let's, uh, let's just go back here. Grab all of this work. This is going to follow the exact same steps that we did over here. Exact same thing. What was the first thing that we did? How do we get uh, x? Oh, one in front of x squared. Right. Right. So how are we going to do that? Divide by a. Divide by a everywhere. 
divide this by a. Well, we can't divide that by a without dividing everything by a. Uh, well, that's really ax squared over a plus bx over a plus c over a. Zero divided by a is going to be zero. Well, what's ax squared over a? both sides by B? Well, how do we figure out what properties of these two are? So you did half of B, and then what did you do with half of B? Multiplied it. Added it to A and the S. Um, well, half of B added this, gave us the ones, and then we do with those ones. We, I mean, why are we subtracting two here? What are we trying to get? Perfect square and a one will give us a perfect square. Two squared. We're, we're trying to get a perfect square. Is C over A going to be the right number to make a perfect square? Probably not. Probably not. Maybe yes, but probably not. We're to pick random numbers more often than not. Uh, uh, we would come up with something that's not perfectly correct. So how about let's just say C over A is probably not correct. Let's just subtract it from both sides so we don't even have to look at it right now. x squared plus bx over a equals negative c over a. Maybe um, let's write this a little bit differently so that everyone knows what we're trying. b over a times x. Whatever b divided by a is, that's what's being multiplied by x right now. Start with, we divide b by 3, and now 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 times x. So, how do we get this number? We're always going to add this number on. How do we get that? You square root it and add square root for b. You square root it or you square it? You square it. Okay, so you take half of whatever this is, right? Half of whatever. Because this, this number now is actually b, the original b divided by a. So we know it's going to factor as x plus half of b over a. How do I write half of b over a? b over a over 2? Times 1 half is a lot easier than dividing b over a by 2. Okay. So if we multiply it by 1 half, we'll get b over a times 2, or b over times a. We usually write the number first. Well, it's going to factor as x plus b over 2a squared. Right. And how do we find the symbol again? Square root half. Square, square half of b over a. So this is half of b over a. b over 2a. We square that. Square b over 2a. else we should be doing here in this line? Well, what did we just do? We should square root that entire thing. We should square root it. We can square root it. We can square it out in the next step. Remember that this guy right here, all of this factors to x plus b over 2a squared. Right? So like that b over 2a squared is part of this. When we multiply this out, we'll get b over 2a times b over 2a or b over 2a squared. We just added b over 2a squared to this side. So we should add it to the other side. Add. Now, how are you going to square? When you square b over 2a, what's that going to be? Multiply by itself. 
multiply straight across. messy, but keep in mind, all we're doing here is the same thing we did over here. Okay. We found the perfect square, the perfect square, messy as it looks, that's it, right there. If we always take everything and divide it by A, <coughs> we're going to take half of this and square it, we'll be able to factor it as X plus B over 2A squared. On this side, if we'd like to add these fractions together, what do we do? Common denominator. And what's that common denominator going to be? A. Just A? 4A squared. Can we multiply this by something to make it 4A squared? 4. By 4? 4. 4A, right? 4 times A times A. squared down here for this one plus b squared over 4a squared. What are we going to have to do to the numerator as well? Multiply 4a. Got to multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same thing. 4ac. Okay, we'll go ahead and put those two fractions together because now they have a common denominator. Finally got it down to like this stage right here where we have this uh, factor squared, right, x plus 1 squared equals negative 2 here, x plus b over 2a squared equals this. Believe it or not, we take the original uh, b and a and c, that's how we found this negative 2. So what do we do then? So we're trying to get x by itself. Square root. Take the square root. Take the square root here. Take the square root here. Square root. Square root. On this side, we just get x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus. Now I'm going to split up these square roots. Square root in the numerator. Square root in the denominator. Square root of b squared minus 4ac over the square root of 4a squared. I'll just clean that right side up a little bit. Plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over. Does 4a squared have a square root? Something that multiplies itself? 2 times a? If we took 2 times a times 2 times a, we would get 4a squared. So it cleans up nicely. Okay. So we're almost there. We're to this stage now. We've got the square root of the squared factor equals the square root of the other side, whatever that was. So what's the last thing we need to do? Subtract b over 2a. Subtract b over 2a. So x is equal to. And the thing with this is, when we have plus or minus, we usually put plus or minus, you know, a second. Okay. So we won't do this, uh, you know, minus b over 2a, we'll do negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Get 
over it. You're doing it. Why? You're gonna like it in a second, because you're gonna like it in a second. Give me a minute. Right. Well, we'll look at and look at these two fractions. What do these two fractions have in common? Common denominator. Common denominator. So we can put them together. So we can do negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Right? Negative b plus or minus that. Common denominator of 2a. And that is the quadratic formula. You can see over there I wrote it down for my calculus class to remind them of the quadratic formula there on the left board. recorded the whole thing, explained every step, tried to write it out as detailed as possible, not skipping steps. So you can watch it over and over and over. I know that just watching me do it once is not enough to make it stick. So you need some practice. Right. Um, so that's going to be part of it. Just telling you that up front. Uh, but what we can do now is we can just use the quadratic formula. Separate from deriving it, we can just use it. This is what it looks like to use it. For me, let me explain it. If we have a quadratic formula, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. We've solved this lots of different ways. We first uh, factored it if it was factorable, nice and factorable, uh, when, there, when this was a one to start with. Then this could be some other number. And we still factored it, but it had to be kind of nice. Uh, it had to factor just right. Uh, then after that, we had the idea of using square roots. So that, like we needed them to write it out that way for us before we could use square roots. Then completing the square, we forced it to have square roots so that we could use the square roots. And by doing that, the square, the completing the square process, we could solve any quadratic. But then we notice we're doing the same thing to every quadratic equation. Every one of them we solve exactly the same way. We get rid of the constant, we divide by a, we find a way to make it a perfect square trinomial, we take the square root of both sides, we uh, add or subtract whatever is inside the perfect group of x, and it goes on and on. So instead of doing that completing the square process every time, we complete the square. That's what we just did. We completed the square. But we complete the square for any value of a, b, and c. So now we can take uh, a quadratic formula, quadratic equation, quadratic equation, uh, right. for x squared minus 6 And all we need to know from the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, we just need to know a, b, c, a. What's a in this equation? 1. What's b? Very good. Negative. Don't forget your negatives. Negative 6. C? Solution to this quadratic equation we can find by doing this. Negative b, that's negative, negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b, that's negative 6, squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 7, over 2 times a, which is 1. Just follow that order of operations we all agreed to use. Negative negative six is six. Plus or minus the square root. What? Uh, that must have been geometry. Geometry? It wasn't fun in geometry. It's fun now. Because <laughs> you're older and wiser. Negative six times negative six is thirty-six. 
uh, minus 4 times 7. Now, especially on this part, just make sure you have negatives. Keep it all straight. If you got a negative times a negative, it's positive. If you got three negatives multiplied together, it's going to be negative again. So just make sure you keep it all straight. So minus 4 times 1 times 7. So that's going to be a negative. Over 2 times 1, which is 2. 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus One more thing. What this really is is 6 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 over 2. Put your common denominators and put the two fractions together. So does this simplify? 3 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 3 root of 2. 3 plus or minus 2 over 2. times the square root of 2 over 1. Uh, 2 root 2 over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So it's just the square root of 2. 1 times the square root of 2 over 1 is the square root of 2. Yeah. So you just cancel each other out. Saw me do it. Um,
positive. Four times three is twelve times nine is one oh eight. Six. Thank you. 